I'm joined in, here in the studio with uh, Adrian Barnes, Ben McLean, Jason McKnight. I'm Rodney Duplissy. <laughs> I didn't say my I was name. Like, what's he going to say? I'm joined by myself. <laughs> Welcome yeah. to the Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We are Tactus and former Tactus. Um, we're going to listen. Once a to Tactus, it. always a Tactus. Always, always a Cactus. We're going to listen to. Uh, we're going to listen well, to. Speaking of which, today, right? We're going to bend some light. He literally has a cactus present. You have a cactus. Yeah, it's my best friend in the office here. You know, there there are people that actually like I've I've heard pieces where people attach electrodes to cactuses and make music out of like the electrodes p- control their synthesizers, and uh, <laughs> it's literal. Cact- I would love to see what Gerald music. comes up with. My, ta- why my cactus's we, name is Gerald. Why didn't we do anything like that for the album? Honestly, I don't know. It's a missed opportunity. I feel like we really missed the mark on that one. You should just plug Next your guitar time. patch cord into a cactus and see what happens. <laughs> Directly into the juice. <laughs> into the juice. Max into the juice. <laughs> we need more <laughs> juice on this mix. <laughs> oh my cactus gosh. juice. It'll quench you. Yeah, do you have enough cactus juice on this? Turn it up to 11. This is um, going to get uh, into some really deep rabbit holes if we don't start. Yeah, we got to do something. <laughs> Doing this <laughs> We've already so, been rabbit holing for like for like seventeen minutes before we even got going. <laughs> at least, at least. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. I guess we should sort of should uh, should we start by just chatting a little bit about the album before yeah. we listen? Yeah. Well, um, let's introduce ourselves for if I mean if we're not using video or if the listener's not watching, we can get people acquainted yeah. with our voices. Yeah. So, uh, hi, I'm I'm Rod. Uh, I like to party. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's an imposter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I'm Rod, and I like to party. <laughs> Nobody I'm parties Rod, but me, and I like to party. Yeah. <laughs> All oh right, God. this is going. All right, oh, no, 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 you're right, Dave. There's party. four of them. This is getting out of hand. <laughs> this is getting out of hand. There's too many. I'm Frank Abagnale. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm Rodney. I'm, I'm Rod. I'm the real. I am the real Spartacus. I am Rodney Duplissy, uh, and uh, I am the former vocalist of Tactus. Um, was in Tactus from when we started it, Adrian and I, in like what 2012, uh, something like that. Is it 2012? Uh, yeah, 20, started yeah, jamming. That sounds about right. I thought you were mm. gonna say 20 years ago. <laughs> it like, feels like it's it. not right. I almost said 2016. Started April 2nd, 1992. In my, my brain, I was like, that was like, <laughs> yeah, it was like five years ago, right. Yeah. No, that was a long time ago. Um, long. But we, yeah, it was like 2011, 2012 that we kind of like got together and we're like making tabs and stuff. But, you, me, Alex Daigle, yeah. um, Alec eventually. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, people came and went and uh, I went <laughs> in uh, 2016 <laughs> um, to California and uh, just left the band to pursue other things and Jason took over vocal duty and... Actually, that's a good segue. Jason, why don't you talk about yourself? Hi, my name's Jason. I'm coming to you live from Williams Lake, British Columbia. Uh, I was in the band up until, well, from when Rodney left, essentially. And we sort of meshed a little bit at one point because you did a show while I had technically started doing things too, but uh, maybe even two. And then we did the cover show together, which was kind of fun. Oh, yeah. The Lincoln Park um that was awesome but yeah so i guess that was 2016 or 20 i don't know sometime and uh 14 2014 have i have i been around that yeah. long yeah god ew we old 14. yeah we old um yeah so 2014 i guess and then i guess i kind of left in 2019 but i'm still sort of involved in various things uh, you might even call me still involved in the band. I don't know. Without okay, giving away too many, without giving away too many <laughs> secrets. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, we we're still working on stuff. We're still working on stuff. Casual it's just obviously hard with you far away. Yeah. Uh, but maybe we'll make the big announcement now. I am coming back at some point next year. So, close, yay! Closer. Hooray! We'll do a reunion tour. I'm just going to quit Tactus and start a band with Ben. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's going to be Ben and Ben's mustache. <laughs> Segway. All right, Ben. ben who, who are you? 
I'm Ben. Uh, I joined the band. I don't know what the year was, but whenever Alex left Same year to go to state, I was like, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, what was it like the Battle of the Bands? I think it was like some, some Battle of the Bands. And uh, so I did that and then ended up winning. And then I guess I joined like more full time after that. Uh, did that album, did a couple songs. I don't even know when I left or why, but I'm still around doing my thing. I don't even play drums anymore. I don't know why you guys have me here. Because <laughs> we like you. We like the way you look. You just didn't know I, I shaved my head. You yeah. have to find a way to segue to Adrian now. Um, that's okay. I'll just start talking over him because that's what I'm good at. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm pretty good at that too. <laughs> um, I'm Adrian. I'm one of the one of the guitarists, uh, and I do I do most of the engineering for the band as well. Although I didn't I didn't mix the album. I did I did record most of it and edit most of it myself. And all of us are here, even though Rod and Ben aren't in the band, is because all of us had a very large hand in the creation of Bending Light, which it's the about a month actually a month ago today. Since we're recording this on November seventh, was the fifth anniversary of its release. Uh, and we're doing a few a few fun things together to kind of commemorate that and make our peace with it and get ready to move on to the next thing. But uh, Rodney sold himself short, left the band as vocalist and stayed on and helped us produce and engineer the album and has since helped us uh, with a couple other things and has done, he did a, a remix for the T2 remixes of, uh, of Glass Atlas. Last, last year? This year? I don't remember when it was. Ask when was it? Last Ask, year, Glatless. Ask Glatless, yeah. I remember it was uh, Christmas just, just this past year. I was like yeah. writing and finishing it up. Or wait, no. Was that two years ago? Oh my God. Oh. No, no, no. It was sooner than that. I just remember you, you we, we mastered it together yeah. in Fredericton, right? Yeah. But I, I don't mean, remember when that was. Right. And then... Yeah. I don't know. I remember, didn't that song come out like way before the pandemic though? Like, I feel like it was a long time ago. Yeah. 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 Glass Atlas was like, was yeah. like the winter after Bending Light. It was the first thing we did together after Bending Light. And it was the yeah. first thing we released that I, that I had mixed. Yeah. Um, oh, but Rodney did a remix of it. It was, it was Christmas 2019 that I was doing a lot of work on that. And then in the summer 2020, I came yeah. and we worked on it a bit more and finished the master. And then it was like fall 2020 when we released it. Okay. That, that's cool. Man, we're, over, we're overdue for some new material. Yeah. yeah. yeah what? <laughs> well, good news for good news for people that there, there might be something coming very shortly anyway. And Ben uh, did a lot of engineering work on the album as well. Programming drums, programming synths, uh, all, all kinds of goodies there. And then of course was performing with us that whole time. Um, so yeah, Jason, what do you what? remember most fondly about that very long recording process? <laughs> <laughs> I remember doing if, a if lot anything. of trips to Fredericton because I think I was living in St. John for like the six months that we tracked vocals. So mm -hmm. I did that, that trip across highway seven many, many times um, for like three, four hour vocal sessions. Mm. I remember going back and forth and making your wife make me tea uh, <laughs> every trip. <laughs> she was awesome. She was uh, the, the, the best support we could have asked for under that, uh, during that process. So yeah, um, she's what else do I remember? supportive. I remember learning a lot about my own voice going through that too, because you have much better ears than I, and you can pick out the little intricacies that I don't even notice, but you'll be more like, uh, I'll do, I'll do a, a phrasing and you'll go, no, your voice needs to be a little more, bit more like, uh-huh. You know what I mean? And I'm like, no. <laughs> so we do 40 <laughs> takes until you're like, that's what I meant. <laughs> Two hours ago. That's exactly what I was talking about. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we got better. We sort of but developed it, our own I got language. a lot better got during better. that process. I still have, a, I imagine if we did another one, I would 
sound like Aretha Franklin by the end of it. But yeah, and, and yeah, Adrian has great ears. But like, also, I think it wasn't that you don't have didn't have the ears for it. But like, it's it's like practicing acting in a mirror or something like that. You had somebody else like reflecting your voice back at you and saying, Absolutely. like, you yeah. know, this is what I'm hearing, and you know, just having another person to tell you what they're hearing because you're hearing your own voice in your own head, you know. Yeah, so it's just like it always sounds way cooler in my head too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it always does. Yeah, it'd be like that. It do. Yeah, that was a. That's it. That's all my memories. That's it. I don't remember anything else. <laughs> I remember wanting to hit my head singing off, the, a lot. <laughs> off the wall several times uh, and like take forty, like uh, Colossus. The, uh, that line. Oh there. Yeah. No. yeah. I hate that line. It sounds really cool now, but I hated recording that. We spent a whole day on that and then left and went to a new song and then came back to it three weeks later. And I was like, I think today might be the day that I can get that one line. Yeah, that's funny. And it's not even the, uh, I don't even think it's the highest. Like, it's not the highest notes on the album. I think that's oh, the in highest King, is in but, King. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just like the, the way the phrase lays out. Is I remember the one that's in like 13 or something. Or is that a another are, are you talking about a different there's the there's the one like uh like vocal uh i think it's over like a 13 8 pattern or something it's wild or some oh. what is that is not that part um, or something? there's definitely there's definitely some some weird oh, time uh, stuff that happens the, the chorus of cardinal possibly i don't know oh yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll get to yeah, it eventually and i'll point it out <laughs> in cardinal we did too struggle with the timing that. on that one too we ended up finding some really uh, unique ways of getting me to to hear the timing in my head over the guitars. I think we put several like fake drum tracks in with just the beat super loud and wide yeah, so yeah. I could find it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I forgot about that. I remember in Cardinal. That's why we, we don't do was... Cardinal live. <laughs> <laughs> we did, there was one spot where like the best thing we could do was to do one take that was like 13 measures long. Is that what you meant, Rod? Maybe that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. It was, a it was just take. like, yeah, it was a scream take that was 13 measures long and we had to do it all in one shot. Right. Yeah. Obviously like multiple attempts of one shot, but I don't think there was actually that many attempts. I think we did like three or four and we got what we needed. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Ben, what do you remember most fondly? Uh, I ate a lot of those Tim Hortons raisin bran muffins on your couch. Yes. Because I remember, like, it was, like, crunch time, like, I think for, like, the week before the album was going to come out, I, like, brought my iMac over, and we had, like, dual iMac, and I was just, like, trying to, like, pound the synths out, and I'd just eat Raisin Bran Muffin after Raisin Bran Muffin. It was very regular during the making of this album. <laughs> yes. There was nothing so, irregular about it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that was, the time that signatures. last week was, that last week was, was, uh, was intense. I remember there was, set, like, days you and Rodney came over and we were just in that, in my room, in my apartment all day. Yeah, with three say, computers going, just like yeah. editing synths and vocals and like doing, yeah. you know, final cuts on stuff. Cause that we had to submit part. it all to Jamie. Yeah. Yeah. That's my favorite part. Cause there was some parts where like we'd come up with like synths or there's just be like, man, there's gotta be like a piano thing here. And then we work on it and then nail it. And then it'd be like, Oh, mm -hmm. it was yeah, all yes. Like, yeah, that was yeah the, the creative juices were flowing strong at the well i mean the whole time but like the under pressure at the end there like all being in the same room that was that was really cool like a lot of a lot of like last minute ideas that wound up being like some of our yeah. favorite bits in the songs yeah yeah exactly yeah mm -hmm. yeah uh, that's what i was gonna say i remember i mean just like yeah in your old apartment in that in the in the studio room just kind of hashing out ideas and finalizing everything you know I, I think by then i'd already done most of the vocal editing um which is like the most of most of a lot of what i did on the album was the vocal editing i don't know if i said that already but um uh that and a little bit of like engineering stuff and i think a little bit of composition like did i think there were a couple riffs i wrote or something oh, one, one or yeah, two yeah there's for sure um just from old guitar profiles or something that made it in yeah and you also did um i remember we were struggling with with the vocals for scimitar 
Cause I, I had like some stuff along yeah. with Jason's lyrics. Yeah. yeah. Jason's yeah. lyrics. Like a, and then you did, you did a whole cover. <laughs> Right, like right. I just, yeah, did, like, yeah. I was like, I was like, these the vocals aren't sitting right, and I sang cool. like the whole song like in a different way, and then yeah, I like think you what we, ended, yeah. yeah, and then I think what we ended up doing was just like fifty fifty, kind of like splicing it. Like, mash, but some of the lines that you had, I was like, that's really cool. I wouldn't have thought of it like doing yeah. it that way. So it kind of, yeah, and that's it was almost uh, representative of like T, and I was listening yeah. to it going, yeah, that sounds like Rodney's patterns, and fair really enough, cool. yeah. <laughs> I always yeah. always struggle to keep up with your patterns. They're way more complex than what I would do. So I don't. I don't. I I, I keep away from the three three two. <laughs> three three two. Yeah, no three three twos. Um, Get out of here with those we three had, three <laughs> It was yeah. J- Jason's lyrics. Jason and I like wrote vocal parts. Yeah. And like we didn't love the way it sat, but we were. I think we performed it actually. Like we actually played it live a couple times. Yeah, I think we played it, it in St. John with Cardinals Pride. Yeah, we played it once. It wasn't Frederick quite ready, too. and we decided to try it anyway. Yeah, yeah, for then sure. And then <laughs> um, we did that with Aurora as well. We did Aurora yeah, with Cardinals show. Pride. Same show. Both, uh, yeah, yeah. both songs in the same show. Yeah. Um, that was fun. And then Alec was like, he was like, I, like, I can't hear it. And he, and he like wrote his whole own one. And yeah. then we were just like, we don't know what to do. And then we gave it to Rodney, and Rodney gave us back something that was like, sort of the best of both worlds with a bunch of other ideas. And then that. you had that yeah. cool, like harmony bit uh, after the first chorus. Yeah. And that's where we snuck your voice in on the, on the album. I yeah. think that's the only place your voice is. That's right. Uh, that's oh, what it was. Yeah. I was, I was trying to remember that earlier today. I was like, my voice is in there somewhere. I can't remember where I, it is. Yeah. yeah it's there. It's it like was. me, you and Jason doing a three part or something. Nice. Um, yeah. And yeah, I just remember. Yeah. Alec was, yeah, I remember Alec had all these ideas and like you had these ideas and I just sort of synthesized them into I remember with that song I was just like the vocals just aren't piratey enough. So I channeled my inner pirate and just yeah. belted and yeah. yeah, we came up with something. Yeah, um, it's a very piratey song. It is. I mean What's it's a pirate's it's, favorite letter. It's I think it's an Alec uh Arr, you think it'd be that, but it's the C. Oh, <laughs> uh, it gets me every time. Um, cool. Yeah. And anyway, and then yeah. So I think I've done most of the vocal editing by like whenever that was. That must have been like late summer, twenty sixteen, where we spent a lot of time um, in your apartment. Finish. I remember that time I was like preparing to go off to grad school in California and like studying for my entrance exams and stuff, but also editing the album. Um, yeah. And it was a crazy busy time, but that was definitely, yeah, the, the highlight of the summer working on that album. Yeah, it was a lot of it was a lot of pressure, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. I remember too. I had to go to, so I think we had to submit the the stems to uh, to Jamie for beginning of June or like mid June or something. Oh, yeah. And like that the week so before the final week, I had to go to Jamaica. I had to go to Jamaica. You had to go. But, you know, it was, yeah, it was a work it was a work trip, right? But it was still yeah. fun. But I had to do that. And then you and you and Jason got together at my apartment to finish recording some stuff while I was away. I forgot about that. And and yeah, yeah you remember? I don't remember what stuff yeah. you were, I don't remember what what song it was, if it was Goliath or King or what been, I can't remember, but it might have been Scimitar or the or the last bit of King. Yeah. One of the two. Then I think we finished, when I came back, we, we finished Goliath, the vocals for Goliath were the last thing we did. And we sent them to Jamie after we'd already sent all the other stuff. Yeah. So I remember, I don't remember what part it was, but we finished like, we finished a vocal take in Goliath. And we were like, that's it. There's nothing else. There's nothing else left to do on the album. <laughs> and I like loaded it into a Google drive and like, I cried myself Goliath to sleep. The, the final. Yeah. That was the last. Yeah thing to do so to so start to finish how long was the process like the whole like, recording process it was a whole was recording a process recording well a year. oh it took way it took longer than a year we started we, alec and i laid the first guitar tracks in february of 2015 wow. and we were like slowly chipping away guitar tracks for a very very long time and then once we booked jamie to to mix it then we started kicking it into high gear of like starting to get vocals recorded and getting other stuff recorded like 
um, that fall because we did the Indiegogo to fund the album to like pay for it to get made basically oh, yeah. in November of 2015, I think. And then we submitted the stems in June. So like that time from like November to June was like most of our free time tracking. was yeah, yeah. Tracking guitars, tracking bass, editing stuff, tracking vocals. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I honestly, I look back on it and I'm like, I don't know how we made so much time to get so much work done when we all had like full-time jobs. I really don't understand yeah. how we I did had it. A, I had a new baby too. Yeah, of course. Yeah. We had time. to travel and stuff and man, yeah, we man, really came so. together though. Like it was a, it was a full team effort and everyone was firing on all cylinders and it was just a really, it was a really exciting thing. It was, yeah, I, uh, I miss it. It was stressful, but I miss it. Yeah. By the it time, was, was time we got close to the end, it was like a well-oiled machine. Like I, we got to, I think the last couple of songs, even for vocals, it, you would say something. I knew exactly what you meant. But the first <laughs> little while, like I said, I, it was so obscure to me that I had no idea what you were talking about. But we got to the end. Yeah. You're like more of this. And I'd go, oh, yeah, I know. I know exactly what that is. Hold on a minute. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but like the last little bit flew by. But for the first little while, it was kind of like trying to get things warmed up and getting into it rolling flow. smoothly. Oh, but yeah. 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 Well, we're probably going to lose our audience if we don't start listening to it soon. All right. Yeah. Let's do the listen through. Let's, let's all like coordinate, get this fired up and yeah, talk I'll about try. the shit we're listening to. Are we going to start with, I assume we're going to start Anamnesis right through. Yeah. Let's start in. I'm going to listen to it backwards. Okay, good. Okay. That's great. Yeah. The whole I'll watch Tenet while you're doing that. Yeah. <laughs> three, uh, five, four, three, two, one, play. Yeah. Let's let Rodney do the countdown. He's more important. Yeah. He's cooler than me. Thank you. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. All right. And amnesis it's begins. Ahead four seconds. I don't know why, but. So speaking that's, of. That's an acceptable that, delay. That like last period of time when we were like slamming things together really quickly in our apartment. Um, I think Ben and I banged out anamnesis in like an afternoon one day. Yeah before a rehearsal we just like sat down together and just like stitched a bunch of stuff together from other tactus songs to make this little intro uh it did not take very long it's great but it came I out sounding this. okay i was so stoked when i th i don't think i heard this until the very end of the process no, and i was yeah, so I stoked about it because nice. like it's such an overture because it just has like all the themes from the album all stuck into the, like the first track and it's just such a like triumphant kind of like here we go this is this is what you're in for yeah, like awesome pulled a little bit of influence from t to kind of yeah you know, it was right. meant to kind of be like a yeah like that right there that's from dirigible right yeah so it, it was meant to be like here's some of our old stuff that's, rolling yeah. into here's some of the new stuff it was like the transition of like but that we're was not rigid. And this is resurfaced, this part. Isn't that every, yeah yeah that's true that was resurfaced mm -hmm. that's the first one i ever did with the band i love that that do, 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 from ridges yeah yep and then that one is from uh aurora yeah Here come the chugs. That's kind of like a, a variation on what's at the end of King. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And this whole like uh, the piano, the riff over top, the uh, is from um, another song in the album. And then the right. piano is from King. Yeah, it's from King too. And the piano here, yeah, this is from the end of King in the Sky. It's this just is like the same chord progression. Right? Yeah. Yeah. If we're not going to go right into Aurora, or we will, but we're going to sync it. Yeah. I don't know. Mine's going to, mine's going to play automatic. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Mine, mine may or may not, so we may have to. Yeah, I'm not yeah, sure. I'm going right into Aurora. Me too. Aurora. It's just started. Yeah. This is probably, this is probably my favorite song to play live off of this album. It's just like, it's so riffy and bouncy, and it was, yeah. it was tough to record, but. I think overall this one I was the most content with like the crispness and the like there wasn't any line in the vocal recording where I was like ah that could have been better. Like yeah this is about as good as I can get at this stage of my 
singing capabilities. So I was really happy with all the vocals in this. Awesome. Yeah, this is a solid one. For sure. This riff is stolen from textures. <laughs> <laughs> all they have is just... This whole song, you wrote the lyrics yeah. about Destiny, right? You're not wrong. So yeah, with this song, I... Uh, yeah, actually, so these riffs I wrote like years before as something I was going to use with like the stuff that Nolly and I were recording together at the time before he got very busy and famous, um, which is fine. I'm not, I'm not complaining. Serious. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> How dare he? <laughs> and we got to here and I had no idea where to take it. And I gave it to Rodney and he came back at me with this riff. And then... We, oh, yeah. I was able to finish the rest of the song in like two nights because I was so inspired by what Roddy did. But yeah, the lyrics are about, it's like the time that we were recording this album and writing lyrics and stuff, Alec and I were playing Destiny a lot. And I was really inspired by like the backstory of, of like the golden age and Destiny and the darkness coming and shutting everything down and like tying parallels between that and sort of what it's like to, to get depression and, and have to deal with it when, you know, everything's going really well in your life and then you still can, can feel miserable and it's not really anyone's fault. So it's kind of Darkness like... Darkness is a part of you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's the loot solo. Yeah. Love this. So Hurdy gurdy in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It has a... I don't know why this riff just has like a... Uh, medieval music feel to me. I came, uh, I came into Tactics from like a way more like mainstream hardcore type of music, like a metalcore with a little bit of chunky, like maybe some seven strings. Mm -hmm. and so that was one of those riffs that when I came over to Tactics, I was like, "What the fuck? What the heck <laughs> <Okay>. is that?" <laughs> yeah, it took me a long time to get that, like, to get the taste for that style like it took me took me a bit to be like okay yeah this is actually I the actually scream is so long to this the this scream goes on super loud ever. Ever. <laughs> that's yeah, the one I mean, in the, the video of the vocal recording like the part three or whatever where yeah. i stick my head out and it looks like i'm slurping a mcdonald's cup or something <laughs> yeah. and that's what it sounds like in the background <laughs> this is my favorite this, part uh, this oh, singing section this. here took me a lot of uh, a lot of time to to kind of find my voice for this one too. Once once I did it once, I kind of had it figured out for the. I rest love of your I love your tone in this part. Yeah, you nailed yeah, it. Yeah, you really that nailed all, it. That was all Adrian going. No, more like this. More like this. More like this. <laughs> like the first couple lines took forever. Yeah, I love the this I love the way the bass really moves nice in the here. second half of that. There's some like piano too that I think that we added in the back. That was cool. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's sick, Jason. Harmonies in Endless Night. <laughs> Transition into the solos, mint. Oh, man. I feel bad because I think like it was Alex's idea to have a solo. The solos in this song were Alex's idea. He was like, oh, we should put a solo here and there. And I was like, yeah, that's really cool. And then, like, I wrote one <laughs> and played it. And he was oh. like, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude, that was my, my solo. Uh, you, you inspired me. I'm sorry. Dude, you plagiarized Tactus in Tactus. Exactly. <laughs> you plagiarized your one own of, song. One of my few regrets. Oh, I don't want to talk over Steve's bass solo. Hang on. Mm. Yeah, Steve really nails the melodic stuff. He has so many cool melodic ideas. Yeah. Um, Get the drum beat that's of, in here, too. Yeah, yeah it's juicy. Dan, Dan Briggs vibes. Uh, one of my, my few regrets in recording this album is I didn't put more effort into the, the clean guitar tone and like I was kind of in this place where I'd been like become satisfied with my distorted tone and my solo tone and I was kind of like settling with my clean tone and I was coming out of like liking this sort of warmer jazzy stuff um, and I wish I'd experimented more and like had some more variation on my clean tone throughout the album but this vocal section here, the oh, 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 oh. that part uh, reminds me so much of a Iron Maiden song, uh, Fear of the Dark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I never made that connection, but yeah. 
That's what happened in my head when I was thinking of like when we were tracking it. I was like, it's got to be kind of like Iron Man. Yeah. Actually, I mean, those speaking guys are of, okay. So if I can copy them. Yeah, yeah. If we're gonna copy anybody. Iron Man's all right. The um, the clean guitar part there. Uh, I've. It's kind of sounds a little bit like a Tool song. I, I can't remember if it might be Forty Six and Two, but I think Alyssa, my, my wife, was like Definitely listening not to that. And she was walking, yeah, at least it's not 332. Uh, she was walking around the apartment singing that Tool song. And like I picked up on that melody like subconsciously and wrote that guitar riff. And then when she heard it while I was practicing it, she was like, hey, that sounds like that Tool song. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And she showed me and I was like, oh no. Okay. I've stolen it. That's the end. Oh, I still get so stoked go. on that song. Yeah, every time. Into the next yeah. One. I jam that song all the time. But it's I, I pretty much. Almost any time I pick up a six string, I, I, I go to those riffs. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Pirate Scimitar. Time. Scimitar, the first single. Yeah. We have videos of Alec writing these riffs in, uh, in George's in apartment George's while basement. we were in yeah. Halifax. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, we bugged him this. so long to actually get him to show us? He's like, no, it's not ready. I'm not going to show you. Yeah. Oh, a little bit of Ben there. A little Ben growls in yeah, the background. Struggle. I forgot. So Ben's, good. Ben's good at the struggle. <laughs> yeah, Ben struggles his whole way through this album. <laughs> these, uh, these, lyrics I wrote, these lyrics I wrote in a coffee shop in uh, St. Stephen. Uh, something's brewing. I wrote a lot of the lyrics for this album in that coffee shop. Is that the place you showed me when I visited you there before you moved? Yes, yeah. Yeah, it's cozy. awesome spot. Great place to sit and work if you can find a seat in the back somewhere. JK Rowling type beat. I, well, I just had way more way more success when there's a little bit of atmosphere or something going on around me so I can not be so, I don't know, something to distract me here and there or like bounce an idea off of or could be literally anything in the room, but sometimes Here's I'll the harmony. pull a word from that's the That's my voice. harmony, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's you. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> but I think this... Uh, this melody for this verse is one of the ones that you had come up with. Yeah, that's all Rodney, yeah. Oh, that's you, this one once again. Yeah, and the first verse a lot too. I think, um, if it, I think the way it, everything f- came out, this like... This part too. When I go high? Yeah. This riff. Man. I love this riff. There's a mistake in the guitar here. It's so high. <laughs> a little harmonic like squeaks through on the left side. <laughs> it's just articulation. It's it's part yeah. of the music. Um, yeah, I think the way things shook out, most of my vocal writing was in the verses, and a lot of the chorus was Adrian or something like that. I think you had a, a screaming pattern for this one too, but we might have changed the pattern a bit. Yeah. But I think you yeah. did, in your version, you did scream over this section. And you had yeah, this part another, too. another funny story about this. I remember when you recorded this part, Jason. Remember this? That part we had to do it like, like eighty times or something. Probably. And my wife was home and like was watching a movie in the next room <laughs> with her best friend, yeah. and it was, it was driving the bananas. She still she still talks about it to this day. Every time we listen to this love. song, she's like, I, I remember. remember. <laughs> yeah. Let me and this remember one too, this. I think I had a hard time finding the uh, the note in this one. Yeah, yeah. That remember for this. Some reason, I, some reason major thirds yeah. and minor thirds. I always struggle with the. Uh, oh, Tactus does a lot. Oh, with the Tactus difference. does a lot of the, like going back and forth okay. between having major and minor thirds in the. Yeah, yeah. we do a lot of parallel mode difficult. stuff. Like yeah. even like mid mid melody and mid phrase, we do a lot of parallel mode stuff just because. Yeah. it's I think it just, sounds just, cool. just to fuck with Jason. <laughs> yeah, just to make his life I harder. I think that's the main motivation for it. Yeah. I love that Alex solo, by the way. It's yeah. so slick. Yeah. And yeah, that guy can friggin' rail on the guitar. <laughs> so much style. He's so yeah. sassy, man. Yeah. 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 So many vocal layers in this album, too. I'm just hearing it. I'm like, I screamed almost every line that I sang in this song. Yeah, we. It fills it up quite a bit. I remember oh. personally, like that note was hard. To that's do. so good. Down. That bend up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the bends. It's taking me back to the love place. I, re- uh, yeah, I remember this too. Oh god. Nice, <laughs> folks. 
Um, yeah, I remember pushing a lot on this album for like more layers, more layers. Even at times when like a- Adrian pushed for it too, but then Adrian be like, "That'd be enough. That's enough." And I'd be like, "No, more layers, more." <laughs> yeah, that was the same too. Yeah, sin- yeah. Ben's like more synths, and I'm like more vocals. Like just yeah. pile it all in. Put in everything. We're into, we're into tall bros now. And I love this the singing in this ben one. Ben has a sweet playthrough video for. That's oh. true. We have yeah. There's a drums video Looks for this so one. Looks so good in that video. Can you have your This was another one of the. Uh, <laughs> this was another one I of the earlier songs collection. that. I think Alec brought this one almost almost finished to us. Yeah. And we just like tweaked some of it and we were playing it live well before we, we recorded it. Yeah, there's a video of us playing this at the cellar. Yeah, they are Adrian lyrics. Yeah. yeah. About his about his wifey. Everything I write's about my wife. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're a, a metal band with so many love songs. Yeah, all love songs. Yeah. So this is this is a little more specifically about my I sort of I had general... the idea to do the whisper thing in this, and I wasn't sure it was going to sound cool, but I'm happy that it, we were able to manipulate it. Oh yeah, it sounds sick. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Can we do the note different the second time? Yeah. I feel like this part time? always goes over really well live, like yeah. when everything cuts out and when it's it, like, what's going to happen? Kicks back in. Yeah. It's so well, heavy. Yeah, I remember this little bell thing was yeah. like straight out of Guitar Pro. Like that was a Guitar Pro sound, I think. I mean, it was yeah. in the original tab. <laughs> yeah, Ben, how much how much Guitar Pro stuff do you think we actually like is actually made on the album? Uh, I don't know. There were quite a few things. Uh, it's probably like twenty percent of what we put in, though. I think because we did have like stuff like the logic instruments and massive and different stuff like that we did try to do some things but definitely those bells were original right on i remember alec putting like he would always put a lot of effort into like finalizing his compositions in guitar yeah. pro and like actually like getting synths to sound exactly oh, yeah, how I take wanted. It off, Rod. oh baby so yeah there was a few there's a few things that definitely came right out of guitar pro because it's just like we just nailed the sound or yeah. he nailed the sound or we tried to copy the sound that we yeah. had like yeah Something like that. I do like that. Uh, that was a cool layer. The stream layer mixed really nicely there. And there. Oh, that's Ben. I think Ben's in. And he's one of the screen layers. I think Ben's in uh, the two layers back there. Yeah. I forget. I I this forgot. section, I could. I sang the wrong note live for like six months remember yeah yeah <laughs> yeah minor third, I major third i was seeing the minor <laughs> yeah you were doing right? like feelings <laughs> yeah and it didn't fit at all but i didn't notice because i'm tone deaf so <laughs> i love this riff yeah it's so epic alex really good at that like soaring kind of melody stuff and the, the tapping yeah the vocals. Yeah, let's lift lift it all up. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think the uh, that was one that we added during the recording process is uh, mm. I didn't like the one note holding for so long. Mm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That was a, that was a, a bonus. Nice There's a lot of cool stuff that, that comes out like you're in the middle of recording and you have like, oh, you know what would sound really cool? Yeah. And then you just slap it in there and it makes its way into the album or into the recording. Yeah. A lot of things we do like that don't make it in too, but we uh, you never know unless you try. So we end up trying a lot of extra things. Yeah, we left the Guitar Pro drums in for this intro. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. We played this live for a, a nice while one live. Yeah. The album too. Yeah, this was this our was opener for quite show a while. Opener. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I made I had made a, a piano intro for it to copy some yes, of the chords. While we were going oh up and then I put that in when we did the when I did T two, uh, the remaster of this song has that in there. Mm. This song has tits. <laughs> Big ones. Thanks, Rod. I like this I love this. Here it comes. Mm. Uh. So- that took a long time to get yeah. right too. 
penis, oh, yeah. my dear? <laughs> the pen. The... Comes the slap. Face yeah. slap. So good. So groovy. Yeah. This I song is, this might works. actually be the... Yeah, this is all you, yeah. Great this is uh, one of the harder songs to play live. 2-1-0 is my favorite, man. Oh, yeah. The heaviest tactics riff of all time, starting now. We made the growls intentionally lower, too. Yeah. Shouldn't, like, that shouldn't work. 2-1-0. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Who does twos? Nobody does twos. A lot of things in this album that shouldn't work that somehow do. Yeah, the the oh. whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My one. This is the part. The, isn't this in like thirteen or twenty one or something? <laughs> yeah, this is in the. It's in twenty one eight. This whole yeah. rip is in twenty one eight. Twenty one. That's what I thought. But we have it grouped weird. So this like, is the one with getting the this timing is, on this one too. This is the one I was talking about earlier, yeah. Where Jason has to sing like 21 16th notes and then change the note yeah. like yeah. at the right time, which is like I like, had the the drums added in here like uh remember we added a like just a snare track because yes. the metronome was not enough for me to hear. Yeah, cuz the metronome was like taka 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah, you're right, right. It's 2116. Yeah. But it's grouped in like 3, 3, 3, yeah. 3, 2, 2, 2. That doesn't help much for a vocalist who has to sing a 21 eighth note long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, tied. Yeah. The, uh, when oh. you go into a conscience, that was what I struggled with. That Those three notes. Mm. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a weird, like, a, it's a weird modulation or something. And there's supposed to be there's supposed to be a bell right there. And I, I don't know if we just like it got masked or we forgot to send it in the stems to Jamie, but the bell I just can't hear it, so I made sure that was audible. What's that? Oh. That was the best part. Yeah. I know. It's okay, it's in the remaster on T two. No. I made sure it was super audible. Good. Good. <laughs> Love this. Those so all those that section the where where I say declension at the end, I had to thesaurus that one i had to come up with a word that would fit and i was like oh that one's cool and rhythmically it makes sense nice. i did a lot of uh thesaurusing on this yeah. uh on this album the chords at the end there were all like not the, this stuff the jazzy stuff but before that it was uh it was my friend matt who did our artwork it was his idea i was showing him some of the stuff when we were writing it and i was like i don't know where to take this song like what should i do it's so heavy and fast and he's like what if you yeah. just like hit some like really dirty gnarly chords and just let them ring and i was like oh cool this is isn't this have Papa isn't Burns this father playing? barnes yeah yeah this is this is Burns. my dad jeff the master bass player playing bass this is, and... yeah this is jeff <laughs> yeah. i love this part yeah it's really neat it's so fun like it's a it's such a fun way to end probably the heaviest song on the album mm -hmm. I, I love the contrast cleanser in between yeah, exactly. Uh, well, writing something like this, it, it was, I don't know, I thought the purpose of it was maybe to show the scope of, you know, the many different styles that you guys are able to write in. I thought it was a good demonstration of that. Yeah, so some things about the riff do have, like, it's, it's not like it's totally out of left field, too. Like, this riff even has something in common with, like, the 2-1-0 riff that Ben was talking about earlier. It's just to tonal now instead of chromatic, you know? Mm. It's, all, it's all linked. Big brain. Oh, oh here it comes. <laughs> There's all, definitely anytime a big brain. Someone asks me, anytime someone's like, no way, you used to sing in a metal band? I was like, hold on a minute. And I show them the music video for this I song because it's it. like the most hardcore song. <laughs> I did that at work. You did that? Yeah, I did do that. Sick. I think these are I think these are coffee shop lyrics too. Nice. It's a coffee shop affair. Yeah. I remember I remember getting really excited, Jason, when we were like writing these vocal parts. Like you came with the lyrics, but like when we were coming up with the melodies. Oh, I'll shut up. Highest note on the so album. <laughs> I think. 
Almost. I think it's the second highest. This one? <laughs> gotcha. That might yeah, be the highest. highest Come yeah. on. Really high. That's so yeah, high. That's a, uh, that's a C sharp, and he hits a D at the end of King. He gets the D at the end. That's right. Oh, he gets the D. He gives us the D at the end. Yeah. <laughs> I really, yeah. I really like this chorus. I thought it was one of the more chorus. accessible yeah. ones. Yeah. Like this most was, people it, can listen was, to this and remember. It's a really catchy. It's such it's a true. catchy chorus, I think. I, it's weird how really like, you don't like think about that one. stuff when you're like when you're making it and you're you're like too close to the elephant. Like you don't see this stuff, and none of us really thought about this song. And then I released the we released the guitar video for it, and it was like the most viewed and listened to thing. And I think to this day, Colossus is like the most popular song from the album. Well, which funny. I didn't really you expect. Know, I thought it was like out, this was my favorite one the whole way through. The most songy. Like it's the least yeah. progressive in a way. In a way, yeah. yeah. Course, like I didn't reasons. I didn't realize that when we were working on it yeah. until after it's like, oh this is And just the thing is a... like your average audience is gonna is gonna connect the most with the vocals yeah. Oh man. The, the vocals which are so I, good. I feel weird saying that, but in general, if I'm listening to a song, I'm seeing the lyrics. I'm not playing the guitar in my head. So and maybe yeah. your guys' brains work differently because you're music nerds, but um, to me, I was like, "That's catchy," and I know that it's going to stick. Yeah, yeah, right on. Yeah, and it and it did. I was just thinking, I was thinking from the perspective of like the riffs and stuff, and I thought it would be like a cool throwdown thing live because of the like the cut time breakdowns. Um, I like but uh, I was like, the riff is really thrashy. I don't think people are going to connect with it, right? I love the amount of bass solos on this album. Yeah, there is definitely a good amount, and I'm not sad about it at all. I, I like too uh, about this song. This is really unconventional. Like it has that big, big chorus, and then we just we take everything away, and we stripped everything out, and then we start adding layers and layers and layers for like a minute and a half before we get back into the heavies again. I thought that was really unique. Yeah. Yeah, and then back into the chorus, and then the intro again. So it wraps up. Yeah, yeah. I remember you saying this was like your favorite line right here. I love it so much. Yeah, and we we did the second chorus is a little different too. We moved some of the parts around. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. A little variety. That's a that's a hard note to hit. Nothing less. And yeah. Nothing less. Yeah. And then I'm going higher, oh <laughs> Yeah. I remember in the in, in the vocal editing, that was like, there were quite a few comps for that one. <laughs> Crazy guitar <laughs> riff, too. Yeah, it's very yeah, hard to play. That, that guitar riff sounds wild, but I think one of the more difficult ones to play is actually when the bass riff is happening. The yeah, like, the I had to record it differently you have to do that than... Forever. Yeah, right. well, I was I had it planned. I was going to I was going to pick it like I was going to pluck each note finger style. Right. And it's it's sustained for so long that like I just didn't I didn't have the stamina to make it past like maybe 8 or 10 measures. So I wound up doing some tricks with some like some like dotted quarter note delays to make mm -hmm. it sound like rhythmically it was doing the same thing, but it made it a lot easier to play. All right, we get Goliath. Goliath. Uh, yeah. Um the song slaps too. Is is uh, some some me lyrics, but I think you had a good chunk of them too, Adrian. I think I just helped you through it. I think As most we of it was written gaps. by you. Yeah, yeah, I filled some gaps um, and stuff. But, but this song, you. I actually wrote this. This was actually an acoustic song that I had started, and then I kind of molded it into a a metal-oriented song. It was initially I wrote the song when my grandmother had did passed I, away. Did like I write some later. of this intro part too, or? Or was that you? Probably. I think that like I, that one of those lines. I was like, I think I did something there. But the song has some of the best vocals. These lyrics lines. were written in like 2010, early 2011. Yeah. No, I mean the lyrics were all you, of course. <laughs> no, no, I'm just. I was yeah, just yeah. thinking back. I, I oh, do yeah. remember yeah. Rodney having his hand in these guitar parts. Oh man, this part is so good. I like this too. Here comes the groove. Yeah, it was a good transition from soft singing to mm. to the belting again. 
The more than I can bear card is sweet too. I like the note. Hmm. That was an Adrian note. Yeah. You just did it so well. A nice high scream layer there. Go. Oh, it was the Dream Theater riff. I wish I could do the high screams like that now. Maybe if I get back into shape. <laughs> That's a good one too. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about this. Another, another like, another like. Let's cut everything out so you don't know where we're going. This part the donks too. This part. This reminds me of uh, what's the last song on T? What the fuck, boom? <laughs> yeah, that's what we call it. I still yeah. call it. Uh, uh, what is it called? Born of Light. Born of Light. Born of light yeah. yeah, before we bended light. We, we, before we bended, we were born from it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, listen to the vocals. Dumps. Listen to Jason. Oh. That was a really oh, hard thing for us to figure out. Yeah. Aren't yeah. you in on those harmonies too, Adrian? I made. Maybe. No, I think it's. I think it's maybe, 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 maybe. But we spent a lot of time I trying remember to figure like, out what the right notes were. Yeah, we were. Like, I remember like the three of us. I think we were just sitting there like trying so many different notes there. Cause, like it was just a weird kind of chromatic scale thing we were doing, and we needed to. And now we're in Happy Town. We're in Major. Yeah, yeah exactly. Majorville. <laughs> Happy Town. Majorville. Maugerville. <laughs> Listen to that. Oh yeah, modulate. Oh, that yeah. little guitar band at the end is nice too. It's a nice touch. That's classic. Yeah. The song Badonks. I totally forgot about this song. It's pretty epic yeah, it's too. It's one that I don't. It's one that I don't uh, listen to all the time. Sometimes I forget it's there, and then I put it on. I'm like, oh yeah, this one's got some cool, cool parts. It, goes, yeah, it has a lot of really cool stuff. It's one of the oh, more progressive. This, here comes uh, here comes yeah. DDA solo. We should have like subbed him into this. Uh, oh yeah. Somehow. Oh man, this this is my favorite solo in the album. It's so juicy. DDA, yeah. Oh yeah. He really nailed it, and we gave him like. Like not a lot of instruction. We were just like, it just it has to end with these three notes because we have a synth that mimics it, and then he does it, and then does a variation of it at the end as well that we didn't ask for. And I remember when, <laughs> when you showed me the first time, Jason, I like almost died. Here it comes. I knew he was the dude for this man. He's he's a genius. And and just a little sprinkle like we didn't even top. ask for that. He just put it in there, and we was like, yeah. oh, oh, it's wow. perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's just, uh, he's such a good guitar player, and, and he's just a really good guy, too. We, when I was with Cryo Crisis, we played with them quite a bit, and did a couple runs with them, and they would always stay at, at either my place or Michael Lane's place, and, uh, yeah, just good guys. Terrible with English, but good guys. <laughs> <laughs> He's good at speaking guitar. So they got a lot better because my French was so bad that we ended up, uh, improving each other a little bit, so. Oh, yeah, I still, chat, I still chat with those guys once in a while. Yeah. They're just good guys. <laughs> I like that synth in the background. That's really nice. Was that you, Ben? Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go, Ben. That was Ben Solo. <laughs> My favorite part. That was Ben Solo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, speaking of solos, Alex Solo at the end of this is really beautiful as well. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah, and then, that's coming. and then you had that big epic chorus at the end with the... Uh, the multi-layered harmony, which is another another thing I'm really proud of. I like that transition when the guitar comes back good in. Fill. Yeah. Oh, it's good. Has a good drum fill into it too. Mm. Like that. Oh, yeah. The song gets good here. But you're like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, the multi-part harmony coming up in the vocals. I know what you're talking I think I about. Stopped. I think I'm I so stoked. The lyrics from a movie too. I just remembered what's coming up. I'm so stoked. Here we go. Here we go.
Yeah. Oh, oh man. man. Back to the heads. Yeah, this song's kind of a dark horse. Yeah. Because we we had to we struggled with it, with it a fair bit stitching it together, but with so much good energy making it, uh, it came out sounding really really cool. And I kind of forget about it, like you guys were saying. Oh, I kind of right. forget about it, and then when I listen to it, I'm like, oh man, there's so much good stuff in here. That just so much so much melody and yeah, cardinal. Another good. Yes, these are garage lyrics. Some good riffs. I wrote these ones in my garage. Garage lyrics. After watching the movie this Centurion. Was... Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. So you know how they're like searching and trying to travel across the mountains in the snow and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of this came from that. I'm lost in I the always... snow. <laughs> or the, in the I, story. I always yeah. felt like this was kind of like a. I don't know. I felt like this is my my like turkey song. For guitar riffs, if I'm being honest, <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's because I, I wrote I wrote a lot of the riffs like very very early on in Tactus uh, when we were like writing the stuff for T. This kind of came out of that, and it went through a whole bunch of different iterations before uh, it made it onto the album. Like it changed yeah. a whole bunch. Yeah. But um, I like. Uh, I was thinking that. Some weird vocal timing in this in this uh, chorus too. I remember yeah, it was kind of hard to nail. I can't down. pull it off live. I've never been able to do it live. <laughs> it's like a there's like an elided note. Like there's a note that a beat that doesn't happen That's or a something. Sick <laughs> yeah, I like this riff. This is a Rodney riff. Yeah. Oh, so chuggy. Yeah, it is. It's funny when I like I listen to this al- album so much. Uh, I don't listen to it very often. I mean, but like whenever I do, I don't know. I'll listen to a riff and just be like, "Man, that slaps!" And then I w- it'll, after it ends, I'll be like, "Wait a minute, I wrote that." Riff. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one's got the funk. I really like. It's funny how you don't even remember. I know, but it makes yeah, it makes it so you can just. Too. You can. It, it's great sometimes because then you can just fully enjoy it like it's the first time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you been on that screen? I haven't listened to this album in, in this year. frozen place. Is that a Ben? The Ben part? Oh, is that? Am I yeah, I think I there's some it's, it's either a Ben part or it's one of my like weird out there screams, hmm. like the higher one in the background. But in this frozen place. Yeah. Yeah. If I try I to do so. a pitch scream, maybe, or if Ben layered it, I can't remember. This this guitar riff is a uh, is like a 2008 Adrian guitar riff. I just like oh I'll just take that out and put it in here. Maybe it'll work. Vocals on this oh, next section. Let's... One two three four five. Vocals on this next section were very inspired by oh, North Lane. Right. It grooves pretty hard for quintuplets. Yeah. I wasn't sure at first, but... Yeah. Ben, do you find your quintuplets weird on double kicks? Not really. It was it was slow enough that I could do it with one foot, so I just... It didn't bother me too much. Nice. <laughs> if I had to like, alternate fives, so that would be terrible. Yeah. But yeah, I, think I like the whisper there. <laughs> mm. yeah, there's a few weird like whispers and stuff and breaths in the album. I forgot about that. At the I end will of not yield as one like the main character is uh, getting getting the fisticuffs and he won't yeah. talk. I will. Fastbender. Yeah. I'm a soldier of Rome. I will not yield. Yeah. Yeah, so if anybody's wondering, go watch Centurion and then listen to the song, it'll all make sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like Dark Side of the Moon. Um, with Pink Floyd, you listen to that and watch, what is it, like Wizard of Oz or something? And Alice in Wonderland? Sense. Is it Alice in Wonderland? I forget which. I don't know. Yeah, just listen to this album oh. while you watch Centurion and it'll all make sense. <laughs> exactly. And there too. Unofficial soundtrack. Mm. Red and Ivory. Love song. Love song. <laughs> love song. This one's got kind of a crazy epic solo in it too. 
Adrian and Alyssa in a tree. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you're right. No, I, I wrote the lyrics to this after coming back from our honeymoon. I had a, I had kind of a weird Red experience was, where like oh yeah yeah the bread because of the sand of the, of the beach and of PI where we got married but. I had a weird experience on our honeymoon where, like, I had so much, like, excitement and anticipation about getting married. Uh, and then when it was all over, we, like, you know, absconded to a Caribbean island. And I just, like, it, I just felt very, very strange, you know? Like, you're supposed to be on your honeymoon, like, having a wonderful time. And it's not, it's not that I didn't. I just, like, the lyrics here kind of encapsulate my experience of it just not being what I was expecting because... That had like so much elation from being so excited about being married and having this huge party to then going into isolation where you know people weren't speaking the language and it was just really it was really really weird like we had a wonderful time together there of course but yeah it's a weird thing and it made a cool song out of it well the song was written but cool cool lyrics yeah I was thinking like I was up to that point I was thinking of like maybe we'll just make it an instrumental or something because I couldn't figure out what to write about but I was inspired when I was out on the beaches there with her you should bring her in and tell her how inspiring she is she is inspiring she's my muse she she needs to make a a cameo in this podcast (laughs) if I yell really loud will she hear me or will I wake up Olivia (laughs) no she's nothing will wake up Olivia (laughs) <laughs> wish my kids were like that <laughs> good solo this is a nice, nice little nice lyrical nice little solo cleansing solo yeah yeah and this is coming up on the next little bit yeah it's like my favorite guitar thing I've ever written in my yes, life this might be my favorite riff too and it's like the most it's time. just it's, it's a pop thing it's so great though yeah it's all poppy I showed Alec this little bit. This is like, a John Mayer. This is too lame. And... This is like, uh, this is a Here John Mayer. Actually, <laughs> it sounds like Free Fallen. Dream Theater in their new album ripped free that off. Free Fallen. Because <laughs> yeah. they listen to Tactus all the time. And I'm Obviously. Free. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Tom Petty. Yeah. Free Fallen. Yeah. It's Free Fallen. We stole it. Sorry, Tom. Yeah, we stole it from Tom. Dream Theater then stole it from us. That's you know, really. We all steal from each other a little bit. <laughs> Where does John Mayer come into all this? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He's involved. He somehow. just does it live. <laughs> That's Alec. Alec is John Mayer. Yes, he's handsome <laughs> enough. It's a good riff. Yeah. I remember. When we when I like tabbed this 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 riff, I had I was dreaming about it. I was like dreaming that I was playing guitar. Are you inside my up. brain right now? <laughs> yeah, I, w- I, I was just gonna say the same like, thing. It was, it was like that's really like, cool. No seriously, like, yeah, it's no seriously. No seriously. I wrote this in yeah. a dream. That's what I did. Right. Tab. Yeah, that's the name of the same. <laughs> like I got up and like went and grabbed my guitar Here's and your like song. played some of the Here's notes. Your song. Don't talk over it. That's your part. Yeah. The only Adrian lead vocals on the album. Yeah, but when I when I heard this part, I was like, dude, why didn't you sing all of the words to this song? Because your voice matches it so nicely. Yeah. And a big still sound as nice as Jason, heard, but I am. Lies. Ben, what can you tell us about the drums that are happening right now? Oh, man, I worked <laughs> really hard on this part. You actually made me listen closer, like, wait, what are you talking about? <laughs> so, yeah, where are the drums? <laughs> you got me there. It's subtle, it's, I like uh, it. The solo was, was tough to make, because the, the chords are just modulating all over the place, and I had to, like, do a chart for myself of what modes I needed to be playing to make it make sense. Yeah. You string them together really well. Because, okay. yeah, it, it is just Earth. modulation after modulation, but then, like, the, the solo gives it a through line that kind of ties it all together. Weren't there a couple different versions of this solo too in the process? I think so. I yeah. remember you saying, like, this has got to be like my moment. Back in the I have to find the right one. I worked, I worked really hard. It's also the only place I used my, my Paul Reed Smith on the album. This build up is so good. Yeah. The way you finish the solo and build up to the next. 
Yeah. That's so good. Thanks, boys. Man. Gets me so hype. <laughs> How'd you get better guitar? Oh. Paradise. Yeah, that's like it, it doesn't get much better than that. Oh, that one, ma- that one, and, and the big solo in King are my two favorite solos on the album. Mm, thanks, man. We never played this live. Yeah. Sam, Sam wanted to. And I was just you know like, other, I don't know, man. You know what other solo I really like? Uh, the one in Sacred. But I was oh, telling Carl since you guys put that song out, and I was like, oh, shit, these guys are so much better than us. <laughs> you guys are just starting, too. It's like your second or third song. Can't beat him, like, him. <laughs> 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 oh, We can't beat him, join him. And that's, and that's what yeah. convinced Jason to switch sides. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I got to the dark the side. We have in. sick riffs. We need a singer, and I was like, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> like that last chord. And then we made you sing a bunch of minor, major, third. Switches. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, at the yeah, same yeah. time. The Jason, same can you sing two notes at once? Split tongue. <laughs> ben, I think some... Ben, you did like the most, the most work of synth stuff on King of the Sky. Like all the, like this whole intro, I remember you being a whole on my synth couch. Solo. Yeah, That's true. Remember, it was a synth solo. I remember we asked Anoop if he would do the drums for the intro and, uh, yeah. and he just never answered me. Are we still on, <laughs> on, on the same page here? My, it's about to start King of the Sky. For yeah, me. It, I, I just, just had the gong go. on, on mine. So cool. yeah. good. Here we go. King ben, of the where Sky. did you find all this these animal one. sounds? <laughs> yeah. He made them. Him and Emily both. <laughs> Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> this is how the baby was conceived. Oh my god. King of the Sky <laughs> too. The <laughs> it was like uh this is the name of the tab. I don't think it changed from No. The the name yeah, stuff this... from the original like Yeah, rough yeah draft. this one and Alex started Rhodes. I think there was Yeah, Alec did Alec did most of this song himself and I, I just did some like stitching work. Yeah. And I the added lyrics, like I think I added the really ending. Good. Like the last the last like minute or so is mine i think but yeah got some crazy lyrics in this one i love like this i was really impressed that you came up with enough words to fill a 15 minute song with multiple chapters <laughs> very daunting it I'm was like, very daunting Holy. it's like writing a small novel i kind of took like them all make sense and still be creative and original all the way through um, i did a lot of i listened thing. to a lot of dream theater and i kind of figured out that like for this to make sense it has to kind of be in three parts like it has to like be like a story where like something's happening at the beginning and then there's some conflict and some stuff gets messed up in the middle and that's like a different section and then the end we kind of bring it all back and the end is its own thing and once i kind of had the idea that i needed to do sort of three different things it made it a lot a lot less daunting to write a lot of harmonies in this song i love this guitar riff we played this live a couple times eh yeah yeah Trying to hit those notes at the end after, like, and we always finish the show with it too. Yeah. So I'm like bagged from right from singing eight or nine songs. And then we get to this one, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Actually, let's do let's I'm do 14 more minutes. So long I get a good breather. This one was by far my favorite to play. So many love- good tempo. Yeah, I love how how much development you got out of this like first. Uh, guitar mot- motif the like da 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 you just explored yeah, like it. every I love this synth here we go the synth here comes the riff the synth rock here it is and here's Jason <laughs> yeah Ben did you find it exhausting like playing something this long live you know, it's one of those weird things where sometimes the faster tempo is actually slower, if that makes any sense. Like, my hand would be going faster, but my kicks would be going slower. So I didn't yeah. find that, and it kind of comes in and out. Like, this part's fast. Like, yeah. I get tired for two seconds, and then I take a break. Yeah. That was your break, that little pause. Yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, that, that eighth note pause. Yeah, like, I take a breath here. This is the pause. And then back into it, so. Yeah. 
Crashy. Pause. Yeah. <laughs> this, this riff's not... It's not super hard to play this riff, but the fact that it goes on for so long because of the, the synth solo is exhausting. Like, I just did the like the bleed, so it's basically back and forth, but yeah. every time it does a little gallop, it just switches feet. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's good. That's that's clever. Tell us about it like it's nothing, too. <laughs> yeah, oh no, it's easy. Hardest song in the world, but it's easy tap to make one on the best. in 4-4, four, four, like along with this. <laughs> <laughs> Some good harmonies there. I love that. This next riff coming up, I hated for the longest time. This one. <laughs> yeah, this is really alecky. This is like super <laughs> alecky tactics. So peppy. Yeah. Yeah. He's but it makes the bounce. makes the heavier parts uh, punch so much more when yeah, you like got these part movie games in there. This part's my favorite clip to play. Next, with the little tappy tap. Yeah. Like take the break. I like this next section too. Yeah, it's great. Then, time. Yeah. Nice. Such a cool transition. Yeah, there's think, a lot of straight um, stuff. Like this is a lot of like four four in this song, but I think Ben, you did a really awesome job of like making things flow and making things groove just a little bit differently as we went along, so it didn't stagnate at all. Yeah, it kept, it, kept it very interesting, and the fact that it's in four four. I think it's really important it, because it's a 15 minute song, you've got to keep this song going like, so whoever's listening can go like this so you don't lose them. Because if this is in, like way obscure the whole way through, yeah, people are going to go, okay, I've heard my favorite part and go to the next song. But this is interesting from start to finish all the way through it. And it's it even full. Yeah. yeah. I think it, that's good. I hated this next section too. Oh, the until, yes. until I heard what was coming after it, and I was like, okay, yeah, that, it's fine. This is like chapter two. This is this is kind of throwback to T as well. The kind yeah, of circus yeah, stuff. I, I look at this section as like... Ben and I were obsessed with circus into chapter two of the <laughs> back then. And we went, ben and I were trying to make one. Tactus a, a circus core band. Mr. <laughs> Insane Clown Posse. Yeah. Yeah. Remember we started live, we started the dirigible with like an actual like circus organ thing. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> so good. Longest time to find the right voice for this too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That breath was good too. <sighs> just a sigh. <laughs> yeah. There's a few spots in the album where we left breaths in on purpose because it was just like, oh, that was yeah. kind of sexy. Yeah, there's another one coming up. It's good. It's um, good to leave and we actually like stopped and recorded that. <sighs> yeah, yeah leading into the growls. Yeah, when it comes in heavy, yeah, like, we like intentionally recorded it. Section. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Th this song, I think, if I were to listen to one song from the album, I listen to this one so that I can like. Some of these sections are the ones that I'm the most proud of being able to track. Like, there's some crazy screams in here that I haven't have never been able to duplicate, and. Some high notes, obviously, that I don't know if I can hit now. Oh yeah, hit it out. There we go. <laughs> Man, it's so expressive. Fa fastest notes in the whole album, right? At the end? Yeah. Uh, yeah, at the end of this solo, fast the fastest notes in the album. Yeah. Shreddy Boy. Fastest notes. I'm sure it is from that one. Here it comes. Here. Oh, it's so crisp. <laughs> so crisp, actually, yeah. Oh. How many takes did that take? <laughs> oh, not many. Honestly, not yeah. many. Here yeah. comes the breathing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, here's the big breath. Yeah, I love this. It brings so much impact to the next part. It's like heavy and goofy at the same time. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it's trying to be. <laughs> I think Ben's in this next section. Oh yeah, totally. The serious Ben action. Oh yeah. Nice Ben. Yeah. This pitch screams so good. I love the the dark controls. Lyrics too, very cool. 
And then the bending light part again. God. <laughs> bending light. Yeah, that's where the name of the album came from. We couldn't decide what to call it. I wanted to call it something weird, and then I like, came we up had with just the finished idea. recording this part. Yeah, and then I was driving home, and I was like, you know what, bending light. That might make sense. That's right. So yeah, I, you texted I, I me. Rodney and, and I were still at my place. Sent this big long text. Yeah, yeah, and I got it, and I was like, oh my god, that's you're totally right. That's what we have to call <laughs> the album. Oh, here we go. Break it down. Something about like how we were. A lot of the 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 album is about like self reflection and seeing yourself in different right. ways or in different lights, and it's yeah. about bending the light to to see yourself yeah, in change, the world in a different way. Yeah, it's changing changing how you're looking at things or, or finding different ways to look at yourself and like reflecting inwards. So it, it made total sense. Yeah. Yeah. I love this whole section. Oh. And this. Yeah, there we go. That note, so high. <laughs> God! <laughs> yeah. Oh, I had to try man. to match the guitar. Yeah. And I love the echo at the end of that riff, too. This riff was so hard to play for me for some reason. It's like that slow, fast, weird spot. I didn't yeah. want a single pedal, but I didn't want to double it either. <laughs> yeah. The timing Remember on we that had line to, was weird. Yeah, and we, we figured out after the fact we wanted to have the delayed parts in the background, and we had to like count the exact eighth notes for yes. Jamie and sent him like, okay, so seven eighth notes after this one, <laughs> you do this, and then six eighth notes after the next one, and he just nailed it first try. Such a good solo here, man. I almost pooped my pants every time you do the whammy dip on this. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's so That's good, the man. Note. <laughs> I like this scream here too. That's the best part. Oh that yeah. That high scream, that high scream there might be the best one I've ever recorded. Oh, I love it. Yeah, this is this is like a totally Jason song, man. You slay this whole thing. Another Dream Theater riff here. Love, love this part. Yeah. Yeah. So juicy. Yeah. Oh man. Wait, the oh, word someone. The, the way that the the word someone recorded. Um, I was like, okay, I'm starting to figure out like the low end, like calm sort of voice. Yeah. This this riff for some reason I have like always forever struggled with playing this guitar riff. I don't know it's just, why it's like not even particularly difficult. It's, it's never I just, ending though. I always flub it live. Always. I would never notice the difference. Oh, the three way harmony. You're in this. In the harmonies in here, right, Adrian? Yeah. Yeah, I remember I do when Rodney was in mixing, the background at the end. I remember when Rodney was mixing this. He sent just the vocal track with the three way harmony in it, and I was like, oh! That's coming up at the end. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, Oh, man. I could just listen to just the, like, the barbershop quartet version of this all day. <laughs> Here's the beginning of the end. Beginning of the end, yeah. Like this time. And there's, um, um, so it's a good build up. I, I plucked the, uh, a lot of the lyrics from the end of this song are plucked right out of Aurora. Yeah. So, like, some of how the album ends is pulled from how the album starts. This this uh, guitar section here reminds me of something from Halo 2, like when you're driving across the beach yes. in one of the missions. Okay. Yeah, yeah. God, yeah. You're the, about to go into the tunnel. This is like, you know, on the same level for me as the build-up from um, Born of Light at the end of... We always got to end every album with we, like... There's a some, there's some build stolen up lyrics the... in here too from Aurora, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's what right. I was just saying. A lot of it's pulled right from Aurora. Yeah. And there's the chords too. This is like Born of Light again, you know? Yeah. Born of Light has those like high uh, chords. Yeah, that's well. true. Over top of the Here chugging. It is. There's the D. He's giving us the D. I feel it. <laughs> oh, nailed it. 
I'm feeling it, Mr. Krabs. <laughs> feeling it, Mr. Krabs. And in the background, that's uh, that's um, an Ebo that uh, Jake yeah. Jake, Jake made. made yeah. Came over one yeah, afternoon and did cool. that stuff for me. Yeah, here we go, harmony time. I love this synth in the background, Ben. Yeah. yeah. No more walks in the woods. <laughs> Darkness is a part of me. We're having such a hard time figuring out how to end this. Remember? Yeah, we had, we had finished it. Oh, and, there it is. and like Alec, Alec was like, oh. no, we have to stop and then redo it. And, and I had to spend a whole night like yes. Just chopping that, that up. One chord. I think yeah. one chord. Chills. <laughs> Chills every time. Oh my God. Well, that's it, awesome. boys. That's the whole thing. Yeah. That's it. That's the album. We did the start to finish. Those harmonies. Dude, you guys to something? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that's like, I've just been what? listening to no. the sugar this whole no. time. The <laughs> sugar is way better. Oh, man. I mean, I feel kind of weird, like, being on here, like, patting ourselves on the back about, about our own album. But, like, Nostalgia. I really enjoy listening to it. Cool. Half of this podcast is going to be me going, oh, I love what I did right here with my vocals. And yeah, my vocals <laughs> right here is so good. Yeah, but, I'm such a good singer. Oh, I sound so I, You have to caveat that by saying, like, I didn't do most of that by myself. It was a lot of Adrian and Rodney's, like, vocal writing. Ben's in there. And a lot of editing, too, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there we, is, we've, we've, yeah, on all parts of the album, there was, there was a fair amount of, like, editing and stuff and work to go into it because it's got to be it's got to be polished and crisp in the end yeah we learned, exactly we all, we were all working learning on this like all of, all of the brains like worked very nicely yeah. on this like it came up with a very unique product and meshed well together yeah, yeah. um yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really proud of being able to put this on and say yeah this is this whole album uh is my band yeah i, mean, I, I still listen to too. it all the time like <laughs> what is it five years five years later i still yeah. listen to this all the time five years yeah i, st I still put it on and, and jam it in the car i like referencing like i like referencing it to like like current work that i'm doing like mix wise i mean i i didn't i didn't mix this but i like like trying to remix the songs myself and like going back and listening and then yeah. you know things like production wise like things that we've that we've done since or or um, I've learned, I've learned a lot. It was a massive, massive learning experience for me making that album. Cause like I had, I basically learned engineering out of necessity being in the band yeah, yeah. And, and like being able to bounce off of Jamie King was probably quite helpful at the end too. Right? Yeah. I mean, that dude is, is wonderful. And he was extremely yeah. responsive to all of our feedback and he said all kinds yeah. of nice things too. And he was really helpful. But like I went from virgins too. Yeah. Oh, he did like mm -hmm. infinite revisions. He was, yeah. he, was and he was like the guy that I remember we had a list of like five or six people that we emailed and it was like, Jamie King was at the top and it was like, there's no way that he's even going to get back to us. Like he's way too big. And yeah. the dude that and did intervals was like, yeah, I'll do it for like 10 grand. And a couple other people were like, yeah, eight, <laughs> nine, 10 grand. And Jamie's like, we, we never expected to even hear back from him. He was like, yeah, I'll do it for three grand boys. Sounds really good. We're like what? <laughs> I couldn't, I yeah, couldn't he believe that he was the guy that was like, oh yeah, sure. It sounds great. I'll do it. And yeah. He was that, like, not just by that. By far the like least was, expensive dude. And he was just so accommodating. Good dude. Yeah. He was super accommodating and he was super into it. So we, we came down to like, we had, we had the, the hot list. Right. And a lot of them yeah. were, you know, they're, they're really, really busy and they're, they're really prolific. And I was expecting to either not hear back or, or get quotes that were way out of our price range. Mm. And you were right. I wasn't expecting Jamie to be, to really get back to us. Um, because yeah, he's he done kind of like the, yeah, right. He's not going to answer. Yeah. Type of and he actually, of, of the sort of the three, the three guys that we were kind of talking to at the end, um, he was the one that showed the most genuine interest, which really got me really excited. Right. He was really like, yeah, like I really want to make this work. I really want to do this. I'm really interested in your stuff. I'll do as many revisions as, as you need. Um, 
and he always had really kind things to say about the music. Uh, even when he, when he gave me the, the remasters, which he did for free, I might add, which is amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. just because he felt like he felt like he wanted to redo everyone's albums because his mastering had gotten better. So he gave me that and he even put in a nice comment just saying like, yeah, this album still rules, you know, here's another version. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was surprised. Version number was, 10. <laughs> yeah. So, someone who's worked with some of our favorite bands and like, who's so, who's so like, you know, well-known in this industry to be, to be sort of the guy who was the most um, open and, and, uh, and, and showing the most interest. We also talked to uh, Ackle from Tesseract who also, he did, he was really interested and he tried to, he tried to, to work with us, but just like the, the UK versus, you know, North American dollar sign thing, mm-hmm. unfortunately didn't work out, but yeah, Jamie was really, really cool. He was so awesome to work with and he, he just like bent over backwards for us. And we were, we were really picky with some stuff. I remember. Yeah. I remember there were a few things where it's like, ah, I think I kind of like it with a little bit more of this. And then he would add it in and I'd be looking back through my notes. I'm like, did I ask for that? I don't really like that as much as I thought I did. And then he'd change it back. And I'm sure he, in his head, he's going, ah, <laughs> <laughs> I spent two hours changing that. <laughs> yes. But yeah, like what a patient guy. I, I don't know if I would have been that patient. Like he, we should have paid him triple. Uh, what we did for how much work he put into this but and and i feel like having his name on it helped us so much too because a lot of the uh the reviews that we had they all talked about how like holy cow jamie king is doing this album and it was like so obviously we expect like this out of it and yeah that that added a lot to you know the the notoriety and the how easily we were able to spread it because we ended up on a lot of different platforms with this one so yeah breakout yeah he was a good catch he um, was a good catch i'd work with him again in a heartbeat he was wonderful yeah i like rodney's shirt yeah right speaking of rodney's got the the btbm shirt on oh yeah nice damn, damn. damn. yeah Let's, yeah. <clears throat> so we're gonna listen to t now <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> listen to ask let's, let's, come out, let's listen to t let's listen to roxanne no, I, I'll just go flush the toilet in the bathroom here if I need to. <laughs> I'll never forget that. That was, that was the funniest uh, one that I've ever done because we it was supposed to be a joke. And uh, <laughs> that's why I did the whole song in falsetto. Yeah. And everyone took it so seriously. They're like, no, you can't do this to Roxanne. Like, Come on. Yeah, we were just oh, messing around. Going. Everybody, people were pissed on both sides. Like, you, you can't take Roxanne and do this. And other people were like, you can't be a metal band and sing Roxanne. So <laughs> it's just like metal fans were angry. Rox- police fans were angry. Like, <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. It, it wound up being good press, though. Like when the oh, internet it's... hates on you about something, everyone goes and listens to it. I thought it was and we actually we maxed out our downloads for that on SoundCloud because <laughs> so many people went and got it just, <laughs> just for the memes. Just, yeah, like Metal Sucks tore us apart and then it also gave us so much publicity. So yeah, it's it hilarious. Fun, oh, it was so funny. It reminded, <laughs> it's a yeah. good thing that I'm not super sensitive because reading through that, I would have never sang again if I was. <laughs> um, I just laughed. It, it was it was Tactus's All They Have Is Just moment, yeah. I think. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it was it was Tactus's moment of all they have is just bam, 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 you know just yeah. getting ripped on, but you know, no, oh, we were just trying to have some fun. You. Yeah, we were. But just, I think yeah. I, I think even, that got us. I think that got us uh, a lot of people going. Well, what do they actually sound like when they write their own stuff? And maybe a few people. Fair enough. Maybe we gained a little bit of a following as a result of that. But maybe a little bit. But yeah. uh, on that note, if Metal Sucks, if anyone from Metal Sucks is listening to this. Thank you for your super mean words to our cover. Yeah. Uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you for saying it was toilet noises. <laughs> yes. Please tell us more about. We've been joking sucks. about it ever since. <laughs> yeah. So much entertainment noises. has come from that review. Um, Didn't they say something like, "There's nothing like a metal cover of the Police's Roxanne to make you wonder if God exists or if God is dead or something like that." <laughs> Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, to make you wonder if God is dead or something like that's that. That's fired. <laughs> yeah, man. I have I have screenshots of that article like saved to my phone for all time. It really cracks me up. 
Oh, man. I have friends who tease me about it still. One of, one of my good buddies is like, anytime, anytime I mention something about the band, he's just like, oh, it's all toilet noises anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys suck. <laughs> That's what the T stands for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. T for toilet. Let's T rename toilet ourselves noises. toilet. Make our next, our next album will be a concept album about, about flushing toilets. Yeah. To tack toilet. Crack one, plumber's crack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Well, this was fun. It's really cool. It was fun. Every time I take a little break and come back to the album, um, it hits different every time. And as I get older and, you know, my ears change and, um, it's still sad. Like, I still love this album. Like it's got a special place, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's also, it's, it's, surprisingly different from a lot of stuff that we've written since yeah it was it was kind of an interesting snapshot of like you know what the group of us were were kind of like piecing together over over the time that we had um and then since then we've just done like singles that all kind of sound you know they all have their own kind of thing going on yeah yeah there's not really uh i I wonder if when we when we get the next one going um if it'll be a whole different sound because it's a whole new chapter in everyone's lives and a whole new uh, set of influences. I'm sure whole, it will. Yeah. You know, yeah. Sort of motivations yeah. for what we're doing. It'll be totally different. No yeah, more it'll be very different. <laughs> but will yeah. it still sound like nope. us? I don't know. Like, yeah, do they sound like the same too. band? It's been so long. Yeah. That, and like well, all the songs, will tell. Been, they're like done by separate people too, kind of almost. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, more completely separate ideas put together and some of them are songy and some of them are progressive and some of them are in different tunings and some like yeah it's all different yeah you can really hear i hope that i hope that as we move into the next one that we still have uh although we have someone different behind the kit i hope that we still have ben's input on this stuff because uh, i very much value ben's knowledge and his uh abilities with superior drummer and with synth and hopefully having rodney on board too um the team's just going to get bigger and bigger and hopefully the albums keep getting we'll just better. keep adding more and more more and more members eventually we'll have 20 people producing the album we won't even write the songs yes. ourselves we'll just get other people to do it we'll have to we'll have to change the band name to like the the tactus symphony or something like that right? so <laughs> yeah, we'll the tactus orchestra yeah. so maybe like since yeah. we just listened to it before we before we all say bye-bye um and also say thanks thanks all of you for jo- joining me and doing this i think this was a lot of fun we should do it again with other people's albums. Um, yeah, yeah, review. <laughs> I haven't seen uh, it in two years. <laughs> yeah. Pandemic, what? Um, let's go around the table after having a fresh listen just now. What's everyone's favorite track and why? Rodney, you go first. Oh, no, not me first. I can't choose, honestly. Uh, well, <sighs> Colossus always hits real hard. Um, like there's something about every track that I like um, a lot. Like there's, there's at least one part that really gets me in every song, but um, yeah. Well, yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to have to say Colossus. That one just, that one hits real hard. It slaps. Right on. What do you think, Ben? What about you, buddy? I go back and forth. Uh, I really like both. Aurora and King of the Sky to play. I think King of the Sky has my favorite parts to play, but I think as a whole, I like Aurora the most. Nice. Yeah, I think it like it's heavy and it's got the smooth parts and like there's something about that like, like I just I don't know. Both listening to it and playing it live, I just love it. So for some reason, that's always been my favorite. Nice. What about you, Jason? Can I do a three-way tie? <laughs> three-way? Absolutely. <laughs> no, you know what? That's, that's cheating. That's cheating. I'll put them in order. Um, I think that Colossus is probably my number one. If I'm going to show anyone my band, that's the song that I put on. Um, and mainly because it's just, it's accessible to like the non-musical ear. And, uh, there's just some crazy vocals and crazy guitar work in there that always seems to catch people's attention. 
Um, same deal with Aurora. That's definitely at, at the top for me too. I, I think it's just a very catchy song all the way through. And then King of the Sky shows everything uh, from A to Z from what Tactus it was capable of at the time of this album. So I always listen to that one too. Um, and it's got the most, some of the most uh, exciting parts for me to listen to are in that song. And I can put that on. I feel like I'm listening to three separate Tactus songs without having to change the track. So I really enjoy that one too. Sweet. Adrian, what's your favorite? Um, I think I, I probably, I mean, I said it earlier that like Aurora is my, one of my favorites to play live. I probably listen to it the most as well. Um, there's something about, there's something about that sort of like, that sort of like second verse kind of where it, it pulls back and you've got the chugging riff and then it builds into that big chorus. That one really, I don't know, that one hits me really deeply. So I listen to that song the most, but I think from like start to finish as a song, I actually think all roads is probably my favorite. No way. It just, yeah, it just kind of goes like, I really, really love Jason singing in it. Like it's really beautiful. And, and the heavy parts, the heavy parts hit really, really hard. I think just because of the way it's, it's structured. Um, One of my favorites to play live because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I love playing it live for sure. Um, I love the guitar. <laughs> it's very challenging. <laughs> so I always get nervous when that song comes up on the set, but I think that's my favorite song on the album from like, as like start to finish, it might not have like my favorite parts out of the album altogether, but from like, from beginning to end, that song really interests me. And I really find myself like really listening to it and following along with it. And um, I think I like that one the most. You're wrong. Yeah, just incorrect. <laughs> incorrect. <laughs> well, my actual, my actual favorite tactic song ever is Glass Atlas but that's neither here nor there. Ask Glatless. Yeah, 332, the song. <laughs> I, like, um, I like Summits. Oh, oh, oh the what? What is it? I think he said... Oh, shit. End it now. Quick, that didn't happen. Edit that out. <laughs> we can edit it in post. <laughs> All right. It's this so has good. been Tactus. We're back, yeah. this. We hope you find us attractus. <laughs> Don't give us any flactus. Jason's cactus. Thank <laughs> you.